Now, rather than continue going down every possible way you can program in C, let's talk about all the C you'll need to know to be able to take this mechatronics class and all of those things we've implemented into our sample code um, called invest.c. So we'll go, first let's run that piece of code and see what it does, then we'll go through line by line. So this might take a little bit. So the first thing I can do is I can uh, compile uh, this piece of code. It's all ready to go. So I'll do uh, gcc invest.c, uh, generate the output, and I'll call it invest. Now let me run invest. And it prints to the screen, says enter an investment, a growth rate, and a number of years. So this is a program that says, give me an initial amount of money and uh, a percent at which it will grow and tell me how long to forward calculate how much money you'll have. So let me say I have $1 invested that grows at 1% for five years. So the first thing that happens is it says, is that a valid input? Did I type in uh, a valid investment, a growth rate, and a number of years. Uh, so apparently I did because it says yes. Then it prints the results. At year zero, I started with a dollar, and by year five, I have a dollar and five cents. Okay, that's interesting. Let's try again. I'll start with a hundred dollars, and I'll grow at twenty-five percent uh, for ten years. So this would be a really great investment if you could find somebody who would uh, give you twenty-five percent interest, because after ten years, you would have. $931. What if we do something wrong here? Let's say we start with an investment of $1 and we go for, uh, uh, I don't know, we're going to lose money for two years. Okay, it still calculates that just fine. Let's start with a dollar and let's do a negative growth rate of 10% uh, for one year. Hmm. Somehow it said, I didn't like that. Uh, probably the negative growth rate so the input was not valid, and I exited the program, and now I'm back to my command prompt. Let's try something else. This is always a good thing. How can we break this program? Let's start with a $100 investment and not give it any other information. Uh-oh, it seems to have crashed. How do I get out of a program that's crashed? I'll hit Control-C, and I'm out. So let's take a look at this uh, sample code and go through line by line and figure out what a program is made of and what are maybe the most complicated aspects of this C programming. If you can understand all of this, you'll be good to go. So I've opened up the code in uh, Visual Studio Code. This is just a fancy text editor. The nice thing is that it can uh, ident identify certain kinds of C syntax and color code for us. So I'm going to start at the top and just go to the bottom. Make it a little bigger. Um, first thing we'll see are big blocks of comments. So slash star says, let me start a comment. And wherever I get a star slash, I will end a multi-line comment, or even a comment that's within a line that doesn't take up the entire line. Um, so sometimes, and this is a style thing, you'll see lots of stars in a row. Uh, those stars aren't doing anything. The only thing that matters was the first slash star and the end star slash. These kind of things just break up your code to make it maybe a little more readable. It's common to put um, you know, some information at the top of your code so you remember what is this code, who wrote it, when was the last time you edited it. Here's another way to do that. Um, sometimes this will be put in here automatically by your IDE or your text editor. Um, but again, the block comment, the only thing important is this slash star star slash. Okay, we've talked about the preprocessor step in the compilation process. Um, anything that starts with a pound is going to be dealt with by the preprocessor. So here we see the pound include stdio. Uh, that means that we'll be allowed to use the print and scanf functions. A pound define is kind of a copy paste. So somewhere in here, we probably had to say, what was the maximum like number of years we want to calculate towards? Um, in this case, we'll, we'll do 100. Uh, that number might pop up in a couple different places in our code, and if we wanted to change it, we'd have to find all of them and replace them. That'd be annoying. So instead, we'll put this uh, uh, constant, max underscore years in all caps, and anywhere the uh, compiler sees this constant, it's just going to hard code replace it with the number 100. 
So max years in this case is not a variable. You couldn't say max years equals you know four. You couldn't change the value in code. This is straight up a copy and paste uh, happening in the preprocessor step uh, to make it easier to change constants. So remember that this is a uh, pound defined instead of an actual variable. We put it in all caps. Uh, so that's a convention um, that's, con that's typically used. Okay, the next thing we've got is um, we've talked about variables, ints and chars and floats. You can make your own type of variable in C. This is called a structure. So in this case, the structure is made up of other more common variables. And what we're going to do is because we're iterating in this program, we're saying let's take um, this n amount of money and a number of years and let's store all that information together because they're related. Um, so we're going to start with a double of our initial investment. That's one of the things we were asked for when it said, you know, type in our initial investment, the growth rate and the number of years. Those will all be stored together in the structure as well as an array that stores um, all of the data as it's propagated forward. So if this was 10 years, we would use the first 10 elements of this array. And this is where the max years comes in because we have to predefine the sizes of our arrays. Um, so we had to say at least 101 years. We're going to bundle all of these numbers together and call it this new type of variable. Uh, the, the data type is now investment. Okay, it's kind of bad form to use global variables in C you know, code on your computer, um, but global variables will come up a lot more on the microcontroller. So in this program, we won't see any global variables, but they would be declared up here at the top, so we could say in I up here or wherever. Uh, in this case, there are none. Okay, we want to make uh, function prototypes. Essentially, we're going to say, hey, I have a, a function in this code, but I haven't told you what the content of that function is yet. So I'm going to essentially declare my functions up here. These are called uh, function prototypes. And I have to make sure they have a type. So what do they return? Or void if they don't return anything. And what do they accept as their input? Um, nothing has to, and there's no content. Those will appear after main. So we'll define our functions up here so that when main starts compiling, if it hits that function, it says, oh, I know that function exists. Uh, later on, I will you know, see what is in that function. Let's take a look at what these functions might do. Um, the get user input function, so that must call the scan app, um, is going to take in a pointer to something of type investment, and it's going to return an integer. So that's probably the thing that returns yes or no, like the thing that was typed in is good to use or not good to use. Calculate growth doesn't return anything, and it takes as an input a pointer. Uh, we'll talk about why it would take a pointer and not a variable. Um, if it did take a variable as an input, it might have to return that variable back as an output, uh, which means a lot of copying and pasting um, numbers. So um, we'll see that that's why it takes the pointer as input. And then the last function, send output. Uh, instead of taking the entire investment, it's only going to take a pointer um, to uh, a double. So that's probably actually taking an, ar an array of doubles as an input, and then the number of years. So it says, um, this uh, person only requested to see 10 years worth of data, so I will send a pointer to the first element of the array and the number of uh, elements after that that I want to print. Okay, so now we get into main, and what we can see here is that, wow, main is really, really short. Most of the content of this program is probably happening inside of the functions, and that leads to what we call modularity. You would like your code to be very readable um, and if this was to be even more readable, we'd probably take these helper functions and we'd put them into a separate C file because it'd be nice if our program was made of files that only took one screen and I didn't have to scroll. So instead I would have tabs and I could go through. Uh, but we didn't get that modular with this code just yet. That'll actually be a homework assignment. So let's take a look at main. Um, main starts, we create uh, a variable called inv of type investment. So that's the bundled uh, groups of several different kinds of variables. And then we're going to call the function get user input and we're going to send it a pointer to this variable. So this variable initially has not been uh, given some initial values. So we're going to send the pointer to that variable to this function and let this function put values into this variable which exists in main. We're also going to send back was the uh, data that was input correct or not. So if it was true, 
while true says go in here and do this stuff and then do it again until eventually you get user input that is bad, a zero would break you out and you'd hit the return zero and the program would end. Okay, so at this point, um, we have uh, asked the, the, the user for input and let's assume that it's good. So there's now data inside of um, our structure. So the variable is called inv and inside of inv is a double called inv zero. So if you have the variable inv, how do you know what the value of inv zero is inside of inv? You can use the dot parameter. So inv dot inv zero says, what is the value of this variable inv zero, which is inside of the structure inv? So this says, uh, make the first element of the value uh, inv array equal to this value that we got from the user inv zero. So we've kind of had this blank array inside of inv and we've seeded the first value inside of it as the number of the user gave us. Now we're going to take the entire, uh, uh, the, the pointer to this um, variable. We're gonna send that to this function calculate growth so that calculate growth has access to all of the parameters inside of inv. And it's going to go through and, and go through the next couple of values of inv array and calculate what their values are. It doesn't have to return anything because when you send the pointer to a function, when that function operates on that pointer, it's operating on inv inside of main itself. So we didn't have to take all the values of inv and send them to this function and then have this function send them all back again. Um, we can have uh, the calculate growth function use this variable whose memory has been allocated in main and it could operate directly on it. So that saves us a lot of time so we don't have to copy values into the function and copy them back out again. Okay, the next step will be to uh, print to the screen. And instead of, again, sending either the pointer or all of the values of inv, uh, we can just send the uh, pointer to the array that's inside of inv and the number of years that we want to print out. So let's take a look at how these functions work because that's the meat of the program. The first one that happens is get user inv uh, uh, input. So I'm going to skip down to get user input. Here's get user input. It takes the input of the pointer to the investment variable that exists in main. So we're going to uh, remember that this is a pointer by saying inv p instead of inv. We have this integer valid, which will eventually um, return back to uh, the while loop that says, yes, the number, I, the, the information I got from the user is valid or it's not. So that's what we're going to return in the end, return valid. Um, so we're going to print uh, to the screen, uh, hey user, please enter the investment, the growth rate, the number of years up to percent D, and we're going to stick into there the number 100 that is copied and pasted for us by the preprocessor. Then we're going to scan F, um, an LF, which means long float or type double. So we're going to get three doubles, expect or two doubles and a integer, uh, expecting them to be separated by spaces. Okay, remember how scanf works. This is the most complicated part, I think. Scanf needs the address of the variable that we're going inside. So the first number is the investment, the uh, initial amount of money that you have. We want it to go inside of the inv0 field of our uh, structure uh, inside of inv, the type investment. So um, if I had the value itself, inv, I would say this could go into the address ampersand of inv.inv0. But I don't have inv, I have inv p. So if you're going to put something into the value of inv0, but you only have the pointer of the variable, you don't have the variable itself, you use the arrow instead of the dot. So I have inv p arrow inv0. That would be the value of inv0 inside of inv. And then I say, let me get the address of that. So when scanf says I got you know one dollar, I'm going to put one dollar inside of the address of inv0 that I got from inv p. Okay, same thing for growth and same thing for years. The only difference with years is that it's an integer. But each time I have the pointer, which means I uh, need to use the arrow uh, function and I need to give the pointer to the whole thing. Okay, so now I've gotten uh, the values that the user gave me and I stuck them into inv, which exists in main. Now I'm gonna try to figure out, did they type in numbers that are valid for me to do the math? So I'm going to say is inv0, which uh, get me the value from um, inside of my pointer, 
is the value of money bigger than zero? So we're only going to deal with positive amounts of money. Um, and uh, is the growth rate bigger than zero? So uh, we're not going to do negative growth. That doesn't make sense. We can do growth less than one, but not less than zero. Um, and is the number of years bigger than zero? Um, and because we only allocated so much memory to do this in the future, um, is the years that they've requested less than the max number of years that uh, you know we've pre-allocated memory for? And all of those things. So if this is true, it's one. If this is true, it's one. So if we get one and one and one and one, uh, then it's one. So valid would be true or one, and it would print out, yes, it's valid. If it's not valid, it'd say we're exiting, and it's going to then send back the zero. If it is valid, it's not going to print anything. It's going to send back the one. So let's come back to main again quickly. So if we get a one back that says, okay, we got the good uh, numbers, let's go in here. We're going to precede the initial investment into the first element of our array, and we're going to calculate the growth. So here's the math that goes on. Taking in the pointer, uh, we have an i that we're going to iterate over. So we're going to start at uh, 1, because we already have that initial investment that's like at time 0. So at time 1 to time um, the number of years that they wanted to know how far in advance would their money be worth, we're going to go one year at a time. And we're going to, um, at the current uh, time, so at time 1, we're going to say, what was the value of the time before at time 0 times the growth rate? And then we'll do that over and over. And because we have the pointer, we have to use the arrow to be able to get the value outside of our structure. So that's pretty simple math. OK, now that we've iterated, that array inside of um, our structure is full up to the number of years that they asked us to calculate. So now we're going to send that array and those number of years to the send output function. So it takes in a pointer to the array uh, and the number of years. OK, here we're going to use uh, sprintf instead of printf. And this is something we'll do a lot with a microcontroller, because the microcontroller doesn't have a screen. So in this case, it's running on the computer. It wasn't necessary to use sprintf. Um, we would do uh, just straight up printf. But let's take a look at how sprintf works. Uh, we'll have a character array of what are the characters we would like to print to the string. And rather than uh, print to the screen, instead of printing to the screen, let's put them into this character array. And then we'll just printf the character array when we're done. OK, so we're going to print uh, results with two uh, new lines afterwards. And from 0 to the number of years, we're just going to print uh, what was that year and how much uh, money is in that array. And we'll do that for each year. So sprintf it into this character array out string, and then we'll printf out string. And after we've printed the number of years required, uh, we print another new line. And we come back to main, and we get the user input again. And as long as the get user input keeps returning true, we'll keep printing until eventually they uh, mistype or enter a negative number, um, and then we get booted out. So that was pretty complicated. Um, structures are uh, hard to wrap your head around. Uh, pointers are difficult enough. But now to talk about pointers of a structure being passed into functions and out again, that can be pretty tricky. Having an array inside of a structure and then uh, pointing to a specific element of that array inside of the structure, all very complicated. So go through that code line by line. Make sure you understand how it works. And when we get to office hours, you can ask plenty of questions. The homework is going to ask you to do a bunch of things uh, to this code so that you have to look at it several times. If you feel like you have a good handle on this, we'll be able to talk about all the C code. This is probably more complicated than we need to do for the microcontroller itself. So let's get to that point, and then we'll be able to start programming our microcontroller.